All compelling evidence, but is it enough to convict Casey Anthony of murder? Over the last few weeks, problem solver Tony Pipitone has laid out the timeline in the case against Casey. Tonight, Tony takes it to the next level. What will happen when the gavel falls and Casey goes to trial? On the defense side, Cheney Mason, prominent longtime criminal defense attorney. Other, From the state's perspective, uh, former assistant charges. state attorney Elizabeth Rodder. Two experienced, respected legal minds asked by Local 6 to delve into the murky world of Casey Anthony. First, the venue, where the trial should be held. From the defense side, is it in your interest to move this trial out of the county? Well, it may very well be, but what county would you move it to that hasn't been saturated with this story? Prosecutions usually, almost without exception, oppose a change of venue. Elizabeth, would you oppose it? Yes, I would make the same arguments that he made. It's just that you can't go anywhere. And Mason said seeking a change of venue could undercut another possible defense strategy. Issue number two, demand for a speedy trial. Casey was indicted and arrested on October 14th, meaning the state has 175 days until April 7th to start her trial unless Casey decides to waive speedy trial. As a defense attorney, do you want a speedy trial in a case like this where there's no body? Well, you know, that's an interesting question. Uh, without the body, the state's going to have an enormous uh, burden, and I don't think they can prove the case that I would certainly give strong consideration to moving on to trial without delay. And there's nothing the prosecutor could do about it. Though without a body, you might think the state would want to wait as long as they could for trial, which raises the question. And as a prosecutor, why would you even go to a grand jury without a body and force yourself to try this case? It's a lot better to deal with witnesses while they're fresh. And the problem with a lot of murder cases is that they take years to try. And so if you wait that long, people's memories start to fade. Mason has his own suspicions about the state's aggressive stance. They thought that by bringing an indictment, charging first-degree murder, which could potentially lead to a death penalty, that that would be coercive enough to cause this defendant to start talking. But Casey isn't talking, and the clock is ticking toward a trial with no body. It's the first day of your speedy trial, Elizabeth. No medical examiner, no body. What do you have? Well, you're just missing a key witness, and so you deal with it. You work around it. You have Cindy who smelled the dead body and said it smells like a dead body. You have George who used to be a deputy and he said it smells like a dead body. You have canine dogs that alerted uh, on the car. And so there's a dead body. Now the question is how many dead bodies does Casey Anthony drive around in her car? Such a case has Mason chomping at the bit. I'd love to see it. It's not going to happen. It can't. Why not? Because there is absolutely no evidence other than somebody saying they think they smell what smelled like a dead body. What if, what if they were right? What if there's a dead body? Does that prove that it was a, an unlawful killing? The answer is no, because not every homicide is murder. This child could have accidentally uh, died in any number of ways, and they're never going to be able to prove without the body or confession. But the state does have one tool, scientific evidence. Chemicals indicating a decomposing human body were found in the trunk of Casey's car. Mason is not impressed. They're going to have to present the evidence to convince the court that such tests are generally accepted by the scientific community. And since you've called me, I've inquired. I'm not aware of a single case in which it has been admitted anywhere. So is this hocus-pocus science? Well, yes. Yeah, I, you know, I'll just have to agree with that. How can I put this person on trial for her life when the scientific evidence has not been used anywhere else? They have to show that it's accepted in the scientific community. It's a hard, high hurdle in Florida to pass. So that's going to be tough for the prosecutor. Yeah. But it's helpful that it's corroborated. Corroborated by a hair. Also pulled from the trunk. A hair consistent in length and color with Kaylee's, showing signs of decomposition. DNA tests reveal it came from Kaylee or any of her maternal ancestors, from her mother Casey through her great-grandmother. Is that not evidence of death? I don't think that it's going to be proving that there was a death. It's are. proving it's an old hair with some tissue that's decomposed. He's good. He's tearing apart the state's case here and basically says there is no case. Every case is circumstantial. It has to be caught on videotape, right? 
I mean, isn't that the only way that it's not circumstantial? So here you have the smell of a dead body. You have chloroform in the trunk. You have somebody who's continually covering stuff up, making up lies, spewing stuff forth. And somebody that, that's missing. And so you prove it like every other case. Without the body, the state is really in a hole. It's really challenged. I mean, it really, not really, impossible. really bad without the body. Challenged, but not impossible, said the former prosecutor. And the defense attorney sounds pretty confident there, but what if she is convicted? If she's convicted of first-degree murder and the state decides to seek the death penalty, things really get interesting. Tomorrow at 11, we'll look at what Casey's defense team is arguing to try to avoid the ultimate penalty. All right, we'll look forward to it. Tony, thank you. Okay. It has been the uh, subject, topic of a lot of controversy, but Local 6 has gotten to the bottom of it. We now know that George and Cindy Anthony do plan to write a book. They don't have a deal in the works, per se, but they plan to put something together in the future. They say it won't be a tell-all book. Instead, it will focus on what families should do if their child is missing.